Welcome back anime lover. One Piece chapter 1092 is out and it features Jinbei who is swimming with the massive Remora's fishes that are trying to cozy up to him. Before we start with the chapter it's a humble request guys, please appreciate my effort by liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Help me to reach 1000 plus by end of this year. Chapters start with the flashback of one day before in the Holy Land of Mary Geoes. Finally, Kuma has successfully climbed his way up to the Holy Land, and he is being attacked by the Celestial Dragon soldiers. They are desperately trying to stop Kuma from causing any damage to the Holy Land. But Kuma is too much for them to handle. Kuma seemed to be in a very bad shape. Someone from the soldiers wonder where is exactly Kuma is heading. And for us too is still unknown what our Kuma's true intentions are coming to marry Geoes. Kuma then unleash an Ursa's shock attack to kick all of them away. The shock wave was very strong and spread out over a big area, and causes damage to the land as well. Suddenly someone arrives there and asks that what Kuum is doing. He then wonders if the Kuma was here to pick up where the revolutionary army left off. As we know Sabo and other revolutionary recently caused a lot of trouble in the Holy Land and they even destroyed food supply. The who has just arrived is none other than Akainu. One of the guards recognized the fleet admiral Akainu. At that moment another person speaks up stepping on a soldier's head. And that person is one of the celestial dragons and he is quite angry and scolding guards for failing. He then turned towards Akainu and started complaining that when he ordered lobster for dinner tonight before he was told that it was out of stock. This sort of thing had never happened before. They even blamed Akainu for letting their food supply dwindle like this. But even worse than that he had allowed someone to hurt them. They started demanding to destroy Kuma immediately. Akainu remained silent and didn't respond to Celestial Dragon words and told Kuma that if we can't control you then this is the end for you. And he even state that we can't allow such a dangerous man like you to run wild. Akainu further exclaims that his personality was supposed to have been totally erased and someone like him who is almost the same as being dead where exactly is he heading to. In the next moment Akainu launched his strongest attack, called Hellhound, against Kuma. This attack melted half of Kuma's face. It is the same attack Akainu used against Daddy of Pirates Whitebeard on Marineford. In the manga, Whitebeard's head was partially blown off by the Hellhound attack and in the anime, it got censored. Akainu realizes that Kuma still had blood running through his veins. Kuma instead of counter-attacking he quickly starts to run away from that place. But, Akainu launches another attack at Kuma and this time his attack slice off one of Kuma's leg. Kuma then uses his devil fruit power and run away somewhere which remains a mystery. Maybe he has realized that he cannot fight a Akainu in such a condition or maybe he has some other plan to do or he has to reach somewhere else. Akainu gets flashback when he last spoke with Bonnie. He told Bonnie it didn't matter how much she complained. Her father's mind would never return. He had volunteered to be reborn as weapon. With tear in her eyes, she called him liar, since her dad would never do this and leave her behind. Back to present the celestial dragons were not happy with Akainu for letting Kuma escape. Fleet Admiral ignored their words and wonders where could Kuma have gone. Kuma had lost his will his mind and everything else. As far as Akainu was concerned Kuma was just a puppet. Scenes shifted towards Egghead Island where Marine were on verge of completely destroying the weaponized sea beast. As we know in the last chapter Sentamaru was knocked down by the Kizaru. And Kizaru was the one who ordered Mark III pacifistas to destroy the mechanized sea beast. Meanwhile, the Marines had managed to step onto Egghead Island. They were in the Fabrio Stratum and were planning to further occupy the rest of the island. Meanwhile Admiral Kizaru has also broken through the Labo phase above the clouds. Above Luffy and Kizaru are engaged in battle with each other, where Luffy is in his snake man form throwing powerful punches at Kizaru. While Kizaru is also counter-attacking with his laser beam attacks both are exchanging attacks. Kizaru exclaims that Luffy power shows that Luffy certainly is the man who defeated Kaido. During the battle Kizaru appreciates Luffy's strength. While they're fighting, Kizaru wonders why a pirate like Luffy is protecting Vegapunk. Luffy instead of answering in return asks him that why do they want to kill Vegapunk. Suddenly Kizaru uses full speed to fly out of the dome. Luffy is shocked and wonder that how far the man flew away. Kizaru was now a considerable distance away from the island as he repaired his next move. Kizaru exclaims that he doesn't want to kill Vegapunk as he has known him for years. Kizaru then started to turning into light as he asked Luffy not to interfere. He uses full acceleration to power himself up. And he made his way back to Dome and then with full power he lands a powerful kick on Luffy. The kick was so strong that it sent Luffy flying far away. Kizaru appeared to be bothered by his own action. 
as he recalls Vegapunk excitement towards creating the giant robot that mankind had always dreamed of. In the next moment it is shown that Luffy has struck with Vega Force 1 and the giant robot has broken into half. Vega Force 1 which is holding Thousand Sunny drops it down because of the sudden collision. Along with Thousand Sunny the three of them Lilith, Frankie and Bonnie are too fallen down. Luckily they all fall safely on the clouds. After they landed, they quickly started running away from the big explosion caused by Vega Force 1 being destroyed. Lilith exclaims that their dream robot has been destroyed and calls this act as unforgivable. Frankie questions them that is the Thousand Sunny all right. The Thousand Sunny didn't get badly damaged because it landed on a cloud. The important thing to note here is that their only ray of hope for escaping this island the dream robot Vega Force 1 has been destroyed. Kizaru then approached them taking a look at her he's surprised how much taller Bonnie had grown. Kizaru let her know that he's here to eliminate Vegapunk and knowing that she wanted dealt with too. Kizaru told her to just get out of his way. But Bonnie refused she was over the whole kill Vegapunk thing and she realized that she should be targeting someone else. Which is mystery for us we don't know what Bonnie saw in Kuma's memory. Bonnie tried to hit the Admiral but he easily dodges the attack. Kizaru with full speed went behind her and asked her that he doesn't want to attack those whom he knows for a long period. And he kicked Bonnie far away. Frankie tried to warn her but the attack was too fast and she too was launching to the defense system. Frankie then charges his radical beam to attack Kizaru. Frankie could do anything Kizaru vanishes from there. Frankie wonder where Kizaru has headed and then he suddenly realizes that Vegapunk Stella is in danger. Then Frankie immediately contacted Usopp in the control room. Usopp received the call in the control room and wondered if they are alright since they heard the explosion. Vegapunk Stella and Atlas has finally cracked York's code. Atlas taunt York that they did it. York was not happy about this and calls them geniuses. Stella told Frankie that they can disable the barrier now he wondered if the Vega Force 1 had gotten their ship to the other side of the island. Frankie tried to warn him about what really has happened. Then suddenly from nowhere Kizaru appeared in front of them. Kizaru told Vegapunk that his escape plan was a failure. And he even talked about the Vega Force 1 destruction, so there is no way they would be able to move the Sunny. After hearing this all of them are in shock. Usopp cries out loud that everything is over now. Kizaru asked Doctor to under that this is a tough mission for him too. He was here to finish things immediately. But just then another loud noise would be heard along with Luffy's loud voice. The next moment Luffy arrives there in his Gear 5 giant form and grabs Kizaru tightly with his giant fist everyone there is shocked to see Luffy's giant form. Kizaru on the other hand doesn't look much surprised by his form he exclaims that Luffy has finally appeared in the form as rumored. The sound of Luffy's oversized heart beating was really loud and was echoing throughout the island. Luffy scolded Kizaru for knocking him all the way down to the lower layer. Apparently, he had to cross the barrier twice and he was afraid he might die. The sound of Drum of Liberation was loud enough to reach the junkyard located in the Fabrio Stratum. And with that old ancient robot has finally awakened. With this chapter ends here. See you guys in the next video.